My name is Scott Carson. I'm the director of the Modison Center. I have the great pleasure of welcoming you all this morning. We're very, very excited about this uh, conference. We have a, a completely full house. We're uh, delighted with the reception. We're so pleased that you're able to come. It's um, the theme of <coughs> excuse me. The theme of the uh, conference is uh, is technology and people and rural development and. Uh, as, as so many of you know, technology is often seen as the solution to problems, but it clearly is not because it's technology and what people do with it that's really very key, and that's been the foundational principle of the work that uh, we've been doing in the Monison Center. So this is the sixth conference of this sort uh, that we've put on, and it, uh, it uh, concludes uh, or the formal conclusion of... Uh, of a uh, major uh, SSHRC grant that uh, we've had for the last number of years. Um, there really have been three uh, uh, purposes of the grant. Um, the first of, of, of which is, uh, is partnership. Uh, a partnership between uh, rural communities and, uh, and academics. And, uh, and, and a wide array of many of you, uh, people who uh, work in the field of economic and, uh, and social development. And, it's very important uh, because on the university sector, uh, so many of the strains on universities is to, is to maintain ourselves as, in some sense, insular and very focused on research work, but it's enormously valuable to us and important for us to engage uh, with, the, uh, with the research world and it, or with the, the world of practical affairs. And uh, we thank you very, very much for uh, collaborating uh, over, over this time. And as part of that, uh, uh, partnership has just been uh, uh, engagement. Um, we've had uh, 40 organizations uh, involved in the project over the last uh, three years. And, uh, and uh, being able to gather together in the academic community a number of institutions. We've had 14 researchers in five different universities, Queen's University, Guelph University, uh, the University of Toronto through the Martin Prosperity Institute, uh, uh, Wilfrid Laurier University and uh, the University of Lethbridge and, and, and across those universities many different disciplines, uh, business uh, uh, faculty members and public policy and uh, geographers, uh, uh, economic development, uh, rural economic development, uh, really quite a wide and, uh, and uh, eclectic array. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, project uh, uh, the projects that uh, that we've undertaken uh, collectively with you are uh, are listed and with brief synopses in the packages that uh, you have there are fourteen of them so on to uh, today's uh, theme so over the past six years um, the Monison Center has uh, as part of its community engagement done uh, workshops and seminars in over uh, fifty uh, communities. Um, uh, my colleague Jeff Dixon has been uh, uh, very, very uh, engaged in that activity. And, uh, and, and, in, and in speaking with communities, uh, uh, really the, the, the message that you would expect is, uh, is, is coming across very loud and clear. And you, and you see the change in demographics, uh, not only across uh, Canada, across the United States, uh, uh, in many parts of Europe and in, uh, in Australia, where, uh, where the, uh, the world of, uh, of uh, agricultural uh, development is uh, changing rapidly and, and along with those change in uh, demographics comes the, uh, the, uh, the loss of traditional and conventional jobs. And so what is to be done about all of this? And, and I think it's the, the work that all of you do and that we have engaged together for the last uh, six years in, in finding ways for those parts of uh, the economy to engage and regenerate and, uh, and, uh, and move forward. And so today we are uh, looking at, uh, with you, how technology and people can, uh, can come together. Uh, so it's research uh, by us and for us. Well, we have uh, today uh, uh, presentations on four uh, of, the, uh, of the studies. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Olina Ivis uh, will be presenting her macroeconomic analysis of broadband impacts on rural development and wage levels. Uh, and we'll be doing this uh, with uh, our uh, partner from Eeyore and Lisa Severson, uh, Dr. Helen Hambly-Odam and Dr. Laxmi Plant, uh, Pant rather, will be uh, 
We'll be presenting case studies on uh, broadband's impact on businesses and communities in eastern Ontario and, uh, and with input from uh, Cam Mather, an off-grid small business owner from our own backyard, really. Uh, Dr. Kelly Packlin from the uh, School of Business presenting her research on mentorship and business services for entrepreneurs and she'll be joined by Allison Lobb from the Huron Small Business Enterprise Center. Uh, Darren Kent uh, will be presenting uh, work that uh, he's done with uh, uh, Dr. Tina Dason of the uh, Queen's School of Business on driving economic growth through rural, cultural and heritage. Uh, Darren will be joined by Peter Lockyer, a passionate advocate for the economic importance of uh, heritage. Um, so we're very pleased uh, to be presenting that, and we have as well uh, two very distinguished keynotes. Uh, Dr. Norm Jackness, a senior fellow with the Intelligent Community Forum in New York, who's a champion for their rural imperative program, and uh, Dr. Bo Beaulieu, director of the Purdue Center for Regional Development, who brings a wealth of experience in building collaborative research initiatives targeting priority rural development issues, and uh, of course an interactive panel, which we will uh, introduce to you more fully later. Um, so it, uh, it remains to me uh, uh, really to thank in advance all of our uh, um, sponsors and partners, uh, Shirk, uh, uh, certainly for funding this uh, wonderful project, for our leadership team partners, uh, the Northumberland County Economic Development, uh, Pella CFDC, uh, Rade Ontario, Rural Ontario Institute, and our steering committee partners, Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus, the Ontario Association of CFDCs, the Queen's Sustainable Bioeconomy Centre, and the City of Kawartha Lakes. Uh, the project's principal investigator, the wonderful Yolan Chan, who I will introduce more formally in a moment, the Queen's uh, Office of Research, uh, the Vice President uh, Stephen Miss, who will be concluding our conference uh, today, the Queen's School of Business, who supports us financially, and, and all of our speakers, and of course, uh, all of you. So I, uh, I now have the uh, pleasure of introducing uh, Yolan. Uh, Dr. Chan is, uh, uh, was my predecessor in the center, the principal investigator of this project, and of course the prime engine and driver, the indefectible uh, Dr. Chan in, in putting all of this together. Uh, hold on, Yolanda. I've got like 14 more pages of your fabulous accomplishments. and, and uh, <laughs> And when I say 14, I mean, there are far more than 14 pages to her uh, CV, but uh, I won't read them all to you. She's very, very well known. But uh, Yolanda has, uh, has moved on uh, in the university to be uh, to being the associate uh, vice principal um, in research, in responsible for the uh, humanities and social science uh, research centers throughout the university for ensuring that the university's broad uh, research plan is, uh, is implemented and the uh, development of a uh, of, a, uh, of an institute for advanced research. Uh, there, there's no one uh, better qualified and uh, with the energy to do that. And, uh, and of course, with that, uh, I'll now go on to the next 46 pages. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Yolan Chen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott, and thank you all for being present. And I join with Scott in welcoming you to Kingston, to Queens, and to, I hope, a very, very informative and rewarding day. The great news is that uh, Dr. Carson and I are so like-minded that our comments are very similar. So much of what I was going to say has been said. So we'll be, I'll be very, very brief. As you look at your agenda, and I hope you all have this before you, what I'd like to do is just to set the context and to continue some of what uh, Scott has said so that you can see how it all comes together. And I'll do so by describing very briefly the project that is the underpinning of today's event, which is fondly called the Research Partnerships Project. It was started in 2011 and you'll see that we've had a number of projects, as Scott was describing, for three years. And this day wraps up the project formally. This is the final conference event. However, you will be finding additional deliverables throughout the year, as I will be describing. So although it's the final time that we gather, it won't be the final uh, deliverable to you all. It was funded, as we've heard, by SHRC 
and by many of you in the room. And I'm so delighted that the partners were honored and named. All of those partners contributed financially to making the research that you're going to hear about today possible. In addition, the goal was to go beyond our initial partners and to expand the partner network so that research that could be extremely valuable to rural communities would be done by academics in conjunction with those living in and developing rural regions. And that has been done here, so with a focus on priority areas. This is the history of the project. So we're at the far right today, the Research Partnerships Project. But this started in 2007 with a memorandum of understanding with the Prince Edward Linux Allington Community Futures Development Corporation, which in turn, as we worked with some of their partners, led to additional projects that were funded by a number of organizations that we value greatly. So SHRC, the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, of course, being a primary funder, but also the Ministry of uh, Rural Affairs. At the time, it was OMAFRA. And we've had funding that has been critical, that's come in to help us do focused projects. For instance, on um, broadband, which is a, a rural research priority. So we had uh, funding from the Ministry of Government Services, the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus, uh, the Eastern Ontario Regional Network, uh, and so forth. One project I'd like to highlight, because I think you should go to the Monson Center's website and look at the report, is a project that was funded by the Rural Secretariat, which allowed us to look at the impacts of all of this research over the years. And the findings of the, that project are on the website. It talks about what community university partnerships can do and some of the limitations of these kinds of uh, research initiatives. It's worth your reading. We've heard about those who took the time both to participate in the, in the projects that you're going to be hearing about today by providing sites for researchers to visit, by providing contact names, input on research priorities and finances. We'd also like to draw your attention to the rest of the partners who, while not contributing financially, contributed in uh, so many other important ways, for instance, being here today and disseminating the research findings. We have really valued this partnership of over 40 uh, organizations. You've heard already about some of the projects that we'll be discussing today. So the Research Partnerships Project overall, as we've heard, has 14 projects in it. The ones that I've put in blue are the ones that Scott already highlighted. They're the ones that we shall focus on. But to give you a sense of the range of topics, we talked about and have studied property issues and real estate in rural regions. We've looked at community capacity at transportation issues. Uh, this afternoon, we're looking at heritage and culture in uh, rural communities. Sustainability has been a big issue. Uh, we are also looking at, in this series of projects, agri-food innovation. And uh, broadband has been a major, major thrust. So you're going to hear that in both, as we heard, the panel and uh, research set of, uh, set of research presentations. You'll see that in addition to broadband, we've looked at small businesses. This afternoon, we'll be looking at the importance of, of advisors to small businesses. Last year, at this time, when we held the annual conference, we focused on entrepreneurship, the creative economy, angel funding, and also immigration in rural regions. So you can see the vast range of issues that were prioritized and studied. And those findings are being disseminated later this year in policy briefs and management summaries, executive summaries. And those will be coming through the Monison Center and on their website. So the website is right uh, there on the uh, the uh, um, overhead, uh, and it's also in your packages. If you're not already on the Monson Center's mailing list, I suggest that you join the list, uh, because you will see that the results of this research, and it's multiple years of research, it has been quite significant. The work has been focused, it's been applied, it's been practical, it spawned new projects. The interactions between the academics and the members of the communities and the leaders of those communities are tremendously valuable and we hope that uh, although the project ends those interactions won't end 
we have been able to really focus on high priority issues and organizations both to both in need of assistance and those who can provide assistance in rural regions. And uh, the assessments that we've done, the research has not in any way been politically or economically biased or shaped. It's just academic research, which we have seen and are thrilled to, to emphasize has resulted in, in incredible benefits to organizations and communities economically, socially, and in other important ways. Well, I'm going to draw my comments to a close. And I just want to, again, encourage you to just soak up the information that you hear today. We'll have uh, so much, uh, it's almost like a, another meal that we're presenting to you. And I wish you a very successful and a fun and enjoyable day. Thank you, Lynn. That's uh, that's wonderful.